it all started with, on the 2nd of January with the protests in the uh, in the city of Janozi in Western, uh, Western Kazakhstan. Uh, and uh, the protests were triggered by the uh, doubling of uh, prices of uh, uh, liquefied petroleum gas, uh, which is uh, used by uh, by people to to run their uh, to run their cars. Very quickly, the protests spread uh, spread across the country, uh, and uh, well, the on the fourth uh, in the um, city of Almaty, which became this kind of main scene of uh, of violence and uh, and uh, uh, riots and all that. Um, uh, the uh, the democratic forces uh, try to also support the support to the people of Janozian and also uh, we're posing political slogans. And that's that's another interesting thing that that uh, what started with this kind of social economic grievances very, very quickly became political. Uh, uh, and the slogan uh, slogan across the country uh, was Shalket, which is old man lead. And old man, of course, it's the first president, uh, uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. And people also were talking about uh, um about elections that you know we want uh, we want uh, to elect our um our officials so the in almaty initially these were the same people we see for years uh, these were the, the pro democracy forces uh generally a very very small group uh so they try to kind of uh, they 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 try to organize uh, the dem demonstrations and uh, the, 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 uh, they are treated in the usual way by the uh, authorities. Uh, there's a lot of police and, you know, kind of they are de detained, beaten up uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, strange things start happening on the 4th um, with, uh, uh, with big crowds gathering uh, and marching uh, toward the center of the city. Yeah? Uh, and we see familiar faces but we also see um, we see a lot of new new, uh, um, new faces, new types of people, right? uh, and it seems that these are people from the uh, from the outskirts uh, outskirts of the city, uh, and like the, the kind of uh, mostly mostly men, younger men, uh, and uh, and they they march and then uh, well uh, the. There are these clashes with the police, uh, and the police uh, kind of very generously uses uh, uh, tear gas, uh, stun grenades, and you know, so kind of trying to uh, remove the crowds. Uh, so the crowds are moving to another square, and then in different parts of the city. So they're like overnight, they, they, there is this kind of uh, there are clashes, uh, and uh, the. Um, and and then on the fifth, sort of, that's where we see the main uh, the, the, the the kind of okay the night and on the fifth, uh, like really chaos and uh, buildings, government buildings are put on fire. Uh, there is uh, marauding. Uh, the uh, kind of the very interesting thing is that uh, the police leaves. Okay, so uh, prior to that, on the third, on the fourth. Uh, in a very usual way, you know, when uh, they, they kind of, um, there is a possibility of protests, the city is swarming with, uh, with law enforcement and, you know, kind of with the, uh, the uh, armored vehicles come and all that. So, suddenly, you know, kind of when the, the, uh, the unrest goes up, uh, the, the law enforcement sort of disappears. Okay, which is very, very strange. Yeah, so there, this, there are people like National Guard, there are some uh, young cadets uh, uh, in the square beaten up and, you know, uh, but, but the police disappears, the military leave the city also. Yeah, uh, very strangely, uh, on the 5th in the morning, um, the, uh, there is a lot of military in the airport and then like less than an hour prior to the arrival of the protesters, and protesters are already walking toward the airport. Yeah, they leave the airport. Okay. Um, so what else is happening on the fifth, apart from the marauding and major violence in the city, uh, is uh, that uh, President Takayev um, removes uh, uh, removes 
Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the first president, from the position of the chair of the Security Council. And that's also the day when uh, he calls uh, on CSTO for, for help. Uh, and the official reason is that uh, the country is under attack, there is an external terrorist attack uh, uh, going on, so we need the help of our, our allies. Uh, very quickly, the CSTO agrees to provide this help, and which is also a very interesting thing. And I'm, I'm sure those who, who, are, who are here, you're familiar with the organization. Um, it's a regional security organization set up in 2002. And, uh, and then basically, um, since then, there they had been preparations for, um, for uh, well, attacks of various kinds on member states, including terrorist attacks, uh, but, uh, but it hasn't really sent troops anywhere on, on an operation like that. So it was kind of, again, it was something unprecedented. So a lot of unprecedented things happened. Uh, and then on the sixth, the operation, counter-terrorist operation starts. Uh, and the, uh, the CSTO troops, are peacekeeping troops, which is also quite interesting because you know the official reason to 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 get them to invite them was a terrorist attack, uh, and the CSTO sends peacekeepers uh, to to help Kazakhstan deal with the situation, uh, and their role was to guard the infrastructure. Now, so it's it's all quite quite strange, right? Uh, and the kind of the official explanation was that, okay, they will not participate in the, you know, in the fighting on the ground. Uh, they will just guard the objects, the, the infrastructure, and that will allow Kazakh forces to engage in the operation. operation. While they were arriving already, the, the, the operation started and, you know, they started cleaning, cleaning uh, the, the streets. And that's when the majority of um, uh, of kind of, of killings of murders took place. Yeah? So uh, yes, on the uh, night of the fourth and on the fifth, uh, we had uh, we had law enforcement people, you know, killed. But on the sixth, seven, you know, and, uh, th that's that's when you know we had like seems a couple of hundred of civilians killed. Yeah. Um, Officially now, um, okay, I need to check it, but I think 227 or something people are officially, you know, officially um, killed during those uh, uh, during those days. The majority, you know, not during the kind of the, the riots, but of six and 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 and, and, forth. and, um, and the uh, the law enforcement, uh, the the security uh, security forces are brutal. Yeah. Um, there is a big, uh, they, they, they are killed, they're shooting, you know, um, uh, the, there is a major crackdown. Uh, by the 11th uh, of January, um, around 10,000 people are, um, are detained, right? There was this famous uh, speech by uh, President Takayev on the 7th of January, uh, in which he, you know, he said, okay, uh, uh, he said that the, the security forces will be, you know, kind of allowed to shoot to kill. But but uh, the I think it was addressed to bandits, right? Uh, but of course, it made a very bad impression on everybody. And I think it was like the biggest blunder uh, so far, the biggest blunder that he made. But the consequent consequent events, I think, show that uh, um, that he he is not Lukashenko, you know that. Uh, it wasn't the Lukashenko scenario that actually the government uh, went for, uh, and we see that that he like very quickly the rhetoric um, changed. Uh, that you know you need to distinguish uh, peaceful protesters from uh, from um, uh, from bandits. Um, the uh, Nazarbayev's son-in-laws were removed from their position. Um, very importantly, the uh, powerful, all-powerful uh, uh, chair of the KNB of the National Security Committee was arrested. Uh, 
Africa. Uh, and now he's investigated on charges of treason. Um, so, and uh, on the 18th of January, uh, Nazarbayev made a video address yeah, uh, in which he said that, um, that I'm supporting uh, President Takayev and, uh, and uh, the, um, um, and also that uh, uh, he's a pensioner, you know, like he had been a pensioner since 2019. So he sort of uh, showed that he, that he's with President Takayev, he supports what President Takayev does, and he sort of doesn't carry the responsibility for, uh, for, what, uh, uh, for what had happened. Um, the family, there are reports that the family members fled on, um, on the first days of the uh, unrest. With Nazarbayev himself, it's not clear whether he's in, he, he claims that he's in the capital. And now, interestingly, kind of people are very careful with uh, how to refer to the capital, right? Uh, you don't hear Nur Sultan as much as you used to. Uh, and, you know, since conveniently Astana means capital, you know, you can say that you know, in the capital and kind of use this old, old name, uh, previous name. It seems quite clear at the moment that it's not an external terrorist attack. And the we were not shown any external uh, external terrorists. Um, I think that the uh, this external terrorist terrorist attack rhetoric was used in order to be able to have the legitimate reason to invite CSTO. Um, quickly, government officials. Uh, our new state secretary, Irlan Karin, for example, uh, started talking about uh, a hybrid attack uh, and then attempted coup uh, and saying that these are internal actors and external. So already we have these internal actors and, and we kind of, it was happening in the, in the biggest city. So there is a lot of evidence. There's plenty of evidence, you know, people were kind of uh, making video, video recordings of their phones, you know, so um, they, there were so many participants in the event. So it kind of, there is a lot of evidence and, uh, and it's quite clear that it's first and foremost internal, right? So the actors were internal. Uh, the, so, so the kind of the claim that's an external terrorist, terrorist attack, nobody takes uh, seriously. Um, the claim that it was an attempted coup is taken more seriously. Yeah. Um, and uh, the kind of, uh, the, it's, it seems the claim that uh, uh, certain forces were, or, you know, um, were mobilized and the violence was orchestrated seems valid. Okay. Uh, and who were these people? Um, and uh, yesterday there was a very interesting, uh, uh, interesting interview with the former uh, chairman of um, National Security Committee, uh, Dudbaev, and he said, "Okay, well, we we know how bazaars are organized, and you know how they function, uh, and that they have this." Uh, uh, kind of networks and groups of uh, of people, and you know there is a chain of command. So, um, so he can imagine and kind of that uh, these people could have been mobilized, yeah? because the, there is certain discipline, uh, and uh, the um, kind of you can you can bring these people fast, right, uh, to to do something, uh, and it's sort of well known um, that. Um, that um, bazaars in uh, in Almaty, Almaty Oblast, were uh, controlled by uh, family members. Okay. Um, the also uh, now uh, security services, uh, national security committee uh, uh, people are definitely uh, suspected because strange things were happening. Yeah. Um, and as, as we see that uh, um, the chair of the uh, 
KNB, Karim Masimov was arrested, then um, all his deputies were removed. There are some other charges pressed against people. There are already some suicides uh, by security services people. So, so uh, kind of forced to think that a, an organization like that didn't see any signs, any preparations for, you know, for, for what happened uh, uh, on the 5th of uh, January, it seems very strange. That's something that also, Dubai, that's what Dubai actually notes. He said, it's impossible that there would be no information. You know, um, second, it was very strange how they behaved um, on the on the 5th uh, and uh, that they were kind of, they got this order of disbanding, going home. Yeah. Um, the um, department, uh, the, the, the department in Almaty was also just pretty much vacated. Nobody was putting up any resistance and, and they have the ammunition there, they have all the documents there. And, you know, so, so, uh, so all these things were just left to, to protesters. We had this situation of a duopoly, right? Uh, where the, the, we had the, the president, we had President Takayev, uh, the legitimate president of the country, but also we had the, the second uh, pole of power, uh, President, first President Nazarbayev, who still retained a lot of uh, formal and informal leverage, um, uh, and his family members and some close, close people. Uh, and he was actually considered the main pole of power. Um, and this definitely changed. Uh, as a result, as a result of these events, and of, on fifth of January, there was a big, big <laughs> um, change in the system. Yeah, uh, when Zabak was removed from this position, there was a very clear, clear signal. Yeah, uh, and and then, uh, well, uh, President Takayev made a speech in which he made direct references to 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 the family and their business, and you know we can see that. Um, there is some denazarbayevization going on, uh, going on in the countries. Things that were not, you know, kind of conceivable in the past are happening now. Yeah, all the the system we've had uh, in we had had in Kazakhstan until January uh, was the system that Nazarbayev built around himself. He was the son, you know, kind of in the in the solar system of. Uh, um, of Kazakhstan. Um, so all the institutions were created in such a way, you know, to service him and, and the court, of course. Yeah, let's not forget the court. Uh, and that's also a very important question. What was the role of Nazarbayev in all this? You know, uh, did he know? And now they're even, you know, kind of further, <laughs> further thinking uh, whether all members of the family were on board, maybe not all the members of the family were on board, because, for example, uh, the second son-in-law, Timur Kulibayev, he, he wasn't removed. He resigned himself from the position in Afemekian, and um, he's the guy uh, who controls the energy sector in the country, yeah, and also, like, you know, the, the, the major assets in the country. But he was always kind of softer, less... Uh, Politically ambitious, at least openly political, politically ambitious. Uh, but but anyways, he was at the meeting. Interesting, he is in the country, uh, and he was at the meeting of uh, President Takayev with the oligarchs. Yeah, that took place a couple of days ago. Uh, which you know makes people think like, what, what's going on? Why some family members are in? Why you know others are removed? Uh, and what kind of charges will be pressed? It was an attempted coup. coup who was behind this coup? And of the, the kind of the, the main suspects are family members. So, uh, so there are a lot of questions, and kind of uh, uh, there is understanding that some kind of negotiations uh, took place. Um, and uh, the we are waiting, kind of how it will all play out. Yeah, what kind of official explanation we'll get? And of course, there is a lot of distrust at all levels. Yeah, um, uh, and and I should also mention that there is a budding trust with Takayev. Some some people have you know very positive about what his first steps. 
Um, but overall, kind of the, re the people are waiting for the investigation to know what actually happened. Uh, and uh, people don't trust the kind of the investigation that would be done just by the government, okay? Because clearly, you know, there was something inside the government uh, uh, that went really wrong. Um, and and there are attempts, kind of, by different uh, different actors to create an independent investigation co commission. And I think one of the most interesting developments is what happened yesterday. Uh, one of our um, well-known uh, lawyers, human rights uh, lawyers, uh, Ayman Omarava, she announced the creation of the Independent Commission. Uh, and this commission, co and, sh and she met with the uh, State Secretary, Yerlan Karin, and he sort of endorsed it, okay? At least on his Facebook page, he says, okay, I met Ayman Omarava, and she has this idea of making a commission. Uh, and, uh, and definitely, kind of something more or less credible needs to be uh, put together and given uh, given to the public uh, to Kazakhstanis but also to the outside world because we need to explain what happened what happened in the country right um, so so we'll see how how they will um, you know how they will deal with it it's a very delicate situation all around uh, and uh, it's, you know, of course, President Akayev was appointed by President Nazarbayev. He was his official, official successor, right? Uh, and he didn't come to this position, you know, in, as a result of free and fair elections. Uh, the, the presidential elections, to, you know, that took place in 2019 were heavily criticized, right? Uh, so he doesn't have this legitimacy to go to kind of to support him, right? Uh, he doesn't have a political party. Now he might become the head of the Nuratan party, but Nuratan party is quite heavily discredited. Um, so, so what he can rely on? Of course, there is the power of having this position of the top executive. And now it's not challenged by this other second pole of power, at least kind of openly and formally. Uh, we don't know what's happening at the kind of this top elite level, right? Because uh, we have quite a few powerful, <laughs> powerful people there. Uh, would they kind of uh, go along uh, with this new situation? Would they try to put up resistance? Would they, do they have their own plans? Uh, so the political kind of setup, um, it's taking shape, the new one. The post Nazarbayev one is taking uh, taking shape, but we don't know what shape it will take. Uh, the government announced uh, social economic reforms, and they started acting uh, acting very fast. And uh, some things are you know cri criticized uh, uh, criticized already, and uh, some criticized that uh, the the new government is two thirds the old government and. Uh, uh, so that they kind of, how can you do this new, you know, create new Kazakhstan and new Kazakhstan is the, now the slogan, yeah, um, uh, that the guy put forward that we're building new Kazakhstan with the old people. But at the same time, you know, the, uh, the you need some continuity, right? Uh, you bring new people, you can, can break everything. So it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a very decisive period of time for Kazakhstan, yeah? uh, and uh, and uh, and clearly he needs to act very fast. They announced these reforms. He talks about the new social, so like building a social state, um, dealing with the with the kind of uh, the, the big inequalities in, in the country with the uh, with the deformed system. Uh, he, he announced that there will be a new social code, for example, in the country, and uh, um, and there will be the new social contract. Uh, he launched uh, the fund for the people of Kazakhstan to the people of Kazakhstan, and he said, "Okay, please, uh, businesses, you know, contribute, you know, so uh, that we can uh, spend it on some." dealing with some social economic uh, social economic problems and there are many questions around the, around that fund how it will 
you know, how it will work. Uh, and definitely it's not a systemic reform. Uh, people are very, some people are very critical of it. Uh, personally, I don't think it's a big problem uh, in a sense that it's sort of a quick way to return some, <laughs> some assets uh, that were either stolen or kind of unjustly acquired, yeah? Of course, it should be organized in a better way, but I think the, the kind of, and everybody agrees that uh, uh, that this fund will not resolve systemic problems that we have, okay? It it's, might be kind of good to have it as an asset to react quickly and, you know, uh, and deal with some urgent needs, but overall we have systemic problems and systemic problems need to be addressed in a systemic way. Uh, it's clear that they cannot be addressed in a systemic way without political reforms. Uh, and that's something that uh, we'll know more about later. He said that he'll he'll uh, come up with uh, with his package of systemic reforms in September. Uh, some people say that you will you, you know you need to start them now. Um, I, personally, I'm not sure he can start them now. Um, I do hope that's kind of that first the this investigation will take place, yeah? And then will be certain liberalization for which you don't need elections, right? Uh, now the parliament can do, will do, will sign whatever the government wants them to sign. Um, uh, but, but definitely we need to start thinking and do it, do it properly, right? Um, the, the, the political reform. So, um, so there is kind of the agenda is huge. The agenda is uh, the agenda is huge. Uh, what we definitely know is that there will be some social economic reforms, and they're already you know kind of underway. Uh, today, before uh, before joining you, I was reading the news about the big uh, development program that uh, they they just adopted for Western Kazakhstan. Uh, that's where the problems uh, problems started. Uh, so there will be uh, there will be these reforms. How thought through? You know that that's that's uh, that's the biggest uh, biggest concern at the moment. I think it's tragic that that uh, we had to do that, yeah. Um, and it's a blow to the reputation. You know, there is an opinion, a widespread opinion, that Kazakhstan now is went back. You know, it's under Russia, right? Um, but why I'm less negative now is first, uh, they kind of, it seems to me that it might have been necessary and the stakes were very high at the moment when the guy decided to call on CSTO help. Yeah, uh, that the alternative was worse. So between two evils, kind of the lesser evil was chosen. Um, the second that they made it very kind of, uh, uh, that they made it clear that uh, the troops will not be participating in action on the ground. Yeah. Uh, whatever active operations are in place, they, they would be carried out by Kazakh forces. And that's actually seems what happened. Yeah. Uh, and that they would be, they would go as soon, you know, as soon as possible. And actually within two weeks, they were gone. Okay. Um, the blow is, High, of course, it's a win for win for Putin. Here, I think the calculation was that the cost will not be high. They kind of they, they knew that uh, once Kazakh security forces get the right signal, yeah, and get on board, fully on board, they can manage the situation. And Kazakhstan has been investing in you know in the security apparatus, uh, in the police, in the military for a long time, you know, so. So it's not a poor country in the sense, and that was kind of the, the course of the course of operators you know, kind of quite developed, right? Um, so I think Putin, Lukashenko, you know, they, they knew that they wouldn't have to fight. Uh, there will be just a mission kind of to, to get there, show their faces, you know, and then uh, and then come back. Uh, and by by doing this, they're gaining a lot, right? And CSTO finally also get some credibility, which it didn't really have. I don't think that that's the end of the multi-vector foreign policy, okay? And in my article, kind of, I, I, I make two arguments in support of that. Uh, first, 
three years, three, three years, now three decades of independence were not in vain, you know, you can't remove them. Uh, and if in the early 90s, all our connections were with Russia, right? Now we have fairly developed relations uh, with other actors. Yeah, in the world, it's, it's more diverse. Uh, there is a generational change as well, right? So we have these new generations that grew up in an independent country. Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, th there were a lot of dependencies, okay? Um, uh, uh, but, but, you know, the, the, the symbolism of, of independence, you know, flag, all these narratives, you know, they, 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 they I think they had an effect. Yeah, we have, uh, we have different generations, much more Kazakh. Um, now, so, so I don't think it's a return, um, return to Russia. Plus, Russia is not in a con condition now, despite all the assertive stance at the moment and the aggressiveness, it's not in the condition of recollecting, you know, um, the post-Soviet space. It's maybe also good that, uh, um, that we got this blow because Kazakhstan got so, you know, arrogant, yeah. Uh, we are the best in the region, overachievers, and all that. And now we have uh, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan sending <laughs> sending troops, you know, to help us uh, deal with the uh, deal with the political crisis. I think we kind of looked better than we were, and now I think it's very very clear how um, how many problems we've accumulated, and uh, also the level of the degradation of the system. We, we knew about these problems, but I think now it's just so clear how explosive it is. And, you know, kind of all these deficiencies are just in the limelight. The January events put them in the limelight. Um, and I hope that that uh, that uh, that will serve as a big, big wake up call in, in the real work on building, building up you know, kind of independence, <laughs> the stronger foundation uh, will be underway. I would be scared if they change the entire government. I'm kind of happy with the continuity because there's already enough chaos, enough mess, you know, and uh, enough moving parts, you know. So uh, the, uh, it's sort of reassuring to see that at least, you know, they will not be breaking things like at their crazy speed. And already quite a few things have been broken, right? Um, so, and the same people can, uh, can you know, act differently, right? Uh, if the push and pull factors are different, right? Exactly, like you remove this center, second center of power, yeah? Uh, the same Smaila would be functioning in a different way, right? Um, because, well, in the previous system, to, to, a, a, a lot of what the government has been doing was servicing the interests, right, of particular uh, particular people, um, and there was a good amount of sabotage, right? Uh, the uh, was the government really uh, fully on board with President Bakayev and his agenda? Uh, it looked to us, you know, <laughs> people uh, people outside that they were not right. Like Marmin was like. This, they, they, there were crisis after crisis, and Marmin was not doing much, right? And um, personally, I'm happy that Kilimbetev is gone, for example, right? So uh, the uh, kind of, I think it's okay uh, that uh, that there is continuity in in this regard. Uh, I think they need to bring some people, not maybe some people with some with good record, right? Um, on board, um, maybe those who served previously, you know, who kind of understand how they, they how policy making works. Maybe some outsiders to refresh certain things and kind of uh, um, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see. There are a number of hurdles, right? One is to kind of move in the really move in the right direction, not just send the right signals. Um, uh, second is to kind of do it in a in the right way, and now they are in a hurry. They seem kind of to make very big decisions without proper <laughs> thinking. Uh, um, 
so and and yeah and the, the, the issue of uh, interests uh, vested interests and you know how strong he is politically now to uh, to confront these different interest groups and interests uh, um, remains to be seen right whether he is uh, he will be six it seems to me that sequ sequencing in the correct way is crucial at the moment uh, whether he'll be able to to do it and I'm more kind of uh, I think you know giving given the fact that he has been at the top of the elites for so long he kind of knows how to operate in this environment but in terms of big socioeconomic reforms um, who are these people who would be like really who have a vision <laughs> how to move and um, and what to do in what order because it's explosive people the society is still agitated you know um so there will be pressures from from all, all corners and all sides 